Sign up at the end of this review to get my personal gear list. That was cool. Tony Policastro here from the Acoustic Letter today, and it is a very special day on the Acoustic Letter. Today with us in the Acoustic Letter studios, which look pretty good, is Except Mr. Paul Reed Stella. Smith. Uh, which, which, yes, it, we have a Stella on display. I have uh, a master luthier here who builds incredible guitars. They look incredible, they sound incredible, um, and we're featuring the Stella today. And I wore my red shirt for the now, occasion. we are featuring the PRS Acoustics <laughs> today. <laughs> we are, we the are. Stella is there because that's where a lot of people with no money start. It's with true. The, with the guitars. And we are in cowboy country, and that is a cowboy <laughs> guitar without the painting. And I, you know, the idea is one day to grow up and not have to use the Stella anymore. That would be the idea, right? Did you start on a Stella? No, I didn't. I started on a Hilo, which is something you never even heard of. <laughs> And, and it was the cheapest piece of junk ever, and I learned Day Tripper on it. <laughs> and my mother had it because her uh, old acoustic got stolen. Uh, somebody broke into our house and stole this beautiful old nylon string that she played, and they replaced it. Well, they didn't have a lot of money at the time. Yeah. They replaced it with a very inexpensive guitar, and that's what I started. And on. it was a high-low. It was called a high-low, which is <laughs> good luck finding one, <laughs> even under a bed falling apart. <laughs> And what and and when was your introduction to guitar as an instrument, acoustic guitar, whatever it was? When was the moment where you're like, I can do music? Well, look, my parents were mathematicians and musicians, right? So it was kind of an interesting household to grow up in. Uh, my brother brought me to a store the day the Hendrix record, the first one, was released. Um, and there was a picture of this guy on the front of the album cover with two eyes on his shirt, and he had a fro, and the two white guys had froze. And he said, these guys are huge in England, and we need to buy this. I said, fine. And it had cellophane. It was, a, it was a record with cellophane on it. Well, I came home, and my brother left. I took the cellophane off and listened to it. When I got to Are You Experienced, I was cooked. I was done. I had never heard anything like it in my life. It was, it blew me away. And... You know, when the Beatles came out, my mother came home with the Meet the Beatles. She, this is an important thing in our history. You know, I saw Ed Sullivan uh, when they played. Um, I was just too young to have seen uh, Elvis play um, Heartbreak Hotel on the Jack Parr show. Um, I was just a little bit too young. Um, but that whole Beatles thing and the Hendrix thing and all that, I was immersed in it. I was too young to go to Woodstock. I was 13. I, my parents weren't going to let me go to Woodstock. <laughs> Had I been 15 or 16, I might have made it, right? Uh -huh. um, but, I mean, once I heard it, it, it was so emotional. It, was, it, was, it, it had such a new energy to it. There was a whole new thing, you know? And music goes through that. Uh, they had these big bands with too many people, and then Elvis shows up and he can do a three, and, you know, and then and then the bands get really big, and then it cuts down to Nirvana. You know, it's yeah. just, it, over and over it gets too big, and then it cuts back, and then it gets too big and totally. it cuts back, and then it cuts got too big, and Jack White shows up and does it with two people. Yeah. Right? It just happens over and over and over and over again, and the guitar is always seems to be in the middle of it. It's and, true. Uh, it's a wonderful instrument. What it really is, is a harpsichord where you can change the length of the strings with your hands. You're not playing keys. And it's very intimate because you're actually... <laughs> make the sound... You're touching the thing that's vibrating. Yeah. You know, the next most... I think the most intimate instrument is singing. And then after that, it's guitar. It's wonderful. And the thing I like about it is in Animal House, when the guy comes down and smashes him over the head, you know, she's, he's singing to her on the stairs trying to get laid, right? And, and, and he says, shut up. I don't want to listen to this. And he smashes the guitar. That is what the guitar is, right? You know? It's true. It's true. So, so It's a wonderful instrument. It, Why would I not be in, enthralled with it? It just seems stupid to not be enthralled well, in, with so it. So in your world, so you're a guitar maker. Well, and one then. you're a guitar that was player, too. With guitar. Well, when I took a guitar I made to Washington Music Center, which was the place in our area, if I opened a case, it grew to a crowd. If I started playing, 
people ran. So I had to, and that's an exaggeration, but not much of one. And I needed to pay attention to the feedback of the world, which was we're very interested in these instruments you're making. We're not interest, interested in hearing you play. And now I'm in a band with the Granger Brothers, which is, you know, to die for. And, you know, you and I were noodling around with yeah. taking Norwegian wood and mix it with the Allman Brothers, you know, and that's fun, you know. <laughs> um, I mean, come on. That's just music, right? It is. It's ridiculous. I, I yeah. did not expect to sit down and immediately start playing. Why not? Which, I mean, but it's funny. Like, you get us in a room and it's like, oh, okay, let's noodle. And it just started. And it, it's awesome. <laughs> the other thing is he's not going to tell you it was Norwegian. What was the first tune he ever learned? So he always it's goes true. back to that. And I said, you just played a little Nor Norwegian wood. And then I explained to him it's about burning the lady's house down. He goes, yeah, right. So I look it up on Wikipedia, which you can do now, and that's what it says on Wiki about him burning the house down. I did down. not know it was going to be this full lesson of just music stuff. So so this was elect when you went to Washington Music Center, this was an electric guitar. That I had made, yes, Correct. Sir. When did this whole thing, and by this whole thing, I mean acoustics, happen? What, what? I met a guitar maker who was just starting named... Steve Fisher, and he had a guitar that I thought had the seed of something special in it. And we got our hands on a Torres. Now, Antonio Torres was the father of the guitar, and we were able to x-ray it. And the question was, what was he thinking, not how did he brace it? And what he was thinking was a double diaphragmed instrument. Um, he was thinking tight on the back, loose on the, loose on the, loose on the top. So he was that thinking was cool. speaker cabinet. Well, let's do it to the other yeah. guitar, right? So it's exactly the same. It's tight on the back, tight on the sides, and loose as a goose on the top. Whereas a lot of instruments are the same note on the top and the back. You don't get energy from nothing. So if the energy's coming out of the back, it's not coming out of the front. And he was thinking projection, right? He was thinking... <laughs> And that should be a lot louder. There's no compressor that you're going to be having on this filming, right? So well, you said we're not going to edit anything. Uh, well, <laughs> I said we get this in one take. I did say that. <laughs> and if he edits it, I'll kill him, okay. right? Because they, the people watching this want to hear the mistakes. They don't want to hear some, you know, edited, you know, uh, it's true thing. They want to hear it. Well, they've heard, they've heard mistakes. So let me show you something. <clears throat> So this is what a Taurus would do. I can't shut it up. Right, so what you're trying to do is, is make a force, which is hitting me hitting the string, and have it erupt as sound. And, he, and the old man was thinking speaker cabinet. He was not thinking double diaphragmed instrument. He wanted all the sound to erupt out of the top. And when we realized what he was thinking, we were able to come up with a X brace, which keeps the top from pulling up, and fan braces in the back, which is the way old nylons were done. Um, if you don't dry the woods right, uh, the, those fan braces don't stop it from cracking. If you have you know, X braces this way across the back, it'll stop it from cracking. But if you're not worried about that, oh my God, it's a whole new ball game. This thing... <laughs> It's harmonically rich, there's bass, there's mid-range, there's yeah. treble. It almost sounds symphonic, right? That's one thing I noticed, you know, we've reviewed a couple of, of your guitars now. Um, and the tonal package, the tonal offering is very complete, and it's very full. But it's also very, for lack of a better term, I use the word non-traditional. Is that the goal? Traditional, I mean, when people hear a big guitar, a jumbo-sized guitar, they expect a ton of volume and just, yeah, in your face. This is way more than in your face. It has the volume, but it has this depth of tone and this kind of nuance that I don't necessarily hear all the time. The idea was it for it to be really loud, really harmonically rich, and nothing deadening anything. So that when I'm doing that with my arm, yeah. I mean, that would be like a rubbery paint, you know. Yeah. I'm trying to deaden it, but it's not doing that. The idea was it w if you played Phrygian or you played...
play minor. Or you play major. It would uh, evoke the emotion of that scale, right? Right. And Ray LaMontagne got his hands on some of these guitars, and he said, Paul, it's making me play different. I was with John Hyatt yesterday. He's got some. He goes, they're making me play different. I wanted it to just be harmonically rich. Look, the Martins and all those guitars are my teachers, right? So yeah. I have nothing but beautiful things to say about them, but I wanted it to be more like the Taurus, which was all the sound was erupting out of here. There was a beautiful big bass note, and the top was actually vibrating, whereas this was locked up. Yeah. And now, I'll, now, now that this is not going to be edited, we have to go to video two because I'm being told by the videographer, this is over. <laughs> we are done. Good job. Oh, God. What, do you do mushrooms? <laughs> You're from Bozeman. You look like it. Do you go search the, you search the pig farm up here have, looking for this stuff? I have a mushroom. No. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing shrooms before your gigs. Is right. that what's going on? Right now.